Hey guys, this is Speaker Freak 95 and I found something that I've lost years ago. I bought this at the... well, I don't even know where I bought this. I think it was a yard sale in town when I first moved to Dunbar, West Virginia. Very, very long time ago. And... oh, I was probably... I don't know. It's been so long ago, I don't remember. This is another deep inside the cl uh, bowels of my bedroom closet find here. This is a Duophone TAD-112. This is an answering machine from yesteryear. This thing, I'll tell you, was a ball of joy when I first got it. Um, and you'll see why. And now I've never plugged it into the phone line, and I'm not going to try. I, I don't think it works. It, I don't know. We do now. We do have a landline, and this would be really cool if we could use this. All the belts are still good. If it even has belts. I don't even think it does. It is from October 1982. Or no, excuse me. June 1982 is a Korean made unit. It's, um, if it'll focus there. There's the sticker for you. You can pause it. Go to www.radioshackcatalogs.com for an information. And uh, there's channel B, for whatever that's for, probably for the phone. It's UL listed, of course. And being the uh, interested little booger I was back then, I took the top, the back off of everything. And what was that on? Excuse me. Being the interesting, or interested little kid I was then, I took the back off of almost everything I could with a screwdriver. And I've lost the screws to this, but luckily I never lost the back. Let's take a look at the, uh, get this off. There's nothing on the back plate, just a blank plate. Oh, and there is belts in there, and, uh, the belts are still good, of course. They're a little loose. Actually, no, they're act no, excuse me. They are very tight. And I did some repairs to it. Even back then I knew how to work on electronics. I don't know if you can see the new soldering right there. I didn't do too good on the soldering, but it works. I think I replaced a few caps in it, and because uh, it didn't work when I got it, as far as I can remember, it uses Elna capacitors. Or well, dead before I replaced a lot of them. I think I replaced four or five caps in it. I'm not exactly sure. Don't hold me to it. I'm not gonna go explore them because it works. And I found I lost this several years ago, and you'll see why I bought it. So, to record your message, and say, let's say someone calls, ring, 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 and then, you know, clicks onto the machine, what you can do to hit record, and I've read these instructions a billion times, I know it by heart now, um, can, you can record, you hit start, it'll go for 15 seconds, then shut off. You can do it in normal speed, and you can do, <laughs> this fast forward button overrides the normal power, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you hear it. There's a little bit of talk back through the speaker, especially on um, um, playback. So you can get an idea of how quickly it'll uh, turn, make the motor go. So let's record in normal speed, of course, where it's supposed to be, starting now. These are three lights, record, calls, and ready. It is digital. The record light is on. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. I have a dog named Pixie. I live in a house, and uh, I farted earlier. And, uh, I think it stopped, actually. <laughs> testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Testing the Duophone TAD-112. I have a dog named Pixie. I live in a house, and I don't play guitar. Blah, 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 blah. Because the Chewbacca thing was the thing I'd done all the time back then. And, I, you know, for memories, i got to do it again. And you have to transfer the tape. You have to hit this little laver right here to release the tape. And put it over here in the next unit here. One, two, three, four. I have a dog. Testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Testing the Duophone TAD-112. I have a dog named Pixie. live in a house and I don't play guitar. Blah, 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 blah. As you can see, the speed was uh, off. The fast forward function is can be used on any of the speeds or any of the functions. Testing, testing. <laughs> and to erase the tape. I have a dog named Pixie. I live in a house and I don't 
Just, it's, it's a little lever with a magnet Testing, on the end testing. of it. One, two. So we'll hold that down for a little bit. Bucket thing was the thing I'd done all the time back then. And Apparently I haven't erased everything. It's really not necessary. It's only for the tape that would go here. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Now I'm going to do the other thing that I thought was so hilarious back then, was to put it in record mode. And I'd always hit it, because this is digital, it'll stay a certain way. Um, like if you record it for 15, or uh, let's say 10 seconds, and it has 5 seconds left, it'll pl uh, record just for those 5 seconds. Unfortunately, that's the only downfall of this model. Um, it doesn't start for a full 15 seconds every time, so I just do that once. Uh, and now let's hit fast forward button and start. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, testing the duo phone, cause, uh, thank you, Majigger, my bobber. <laughs> Woo! Alright, let's see. Now that's gonna be really slow if you play it, you know, normal speed. As you can see, when the motor slowed down, it sped up the recording a little bit. Hard to explain, but if anyone's worked on a tape recorder, you know who you are, Cassette Master. Um, you'll know what I mean by that. But here's a little overview of the unit. And I just kept it, just for that reason. Still got the simulated wood grain finish. That realistic was, or radio shack was known. Um, there's a delay and an immediate. I don't know what I, I get. Oh, that is pretty useful. The line cord in which I wasn't, you know, too stupid. I didn't chop it off like I thought I was going, like I thought I was doing earlier. Because if I can use this, then I'll definitely use it. And uh, that's about it. But I figured I'd share that. Let's do one more recording in fast mode. To insert a tape on the left side, you have to push this lever down, which pulls the tape head and the, and the mechanism back so you can land the uh, tape in there. You can also do that intermittently like this. Testing, 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 one, two, three, four, testing, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, testing, 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 one, two. I know that's probably abusing the unit, but I've done it for so long it's never broken down, and if it breaks down, I could fix it if I wanted to, which I, you know, I think these are worth a little repair to get them going because they're just too much fun. It's also fun to, uh, let's see, let me go get my phone real quick and we'll record some music playing out of the little speaker in the phone into the little microphone right here, which is right beside the speaker. Let me go get the phone real quick. Let's get a little bit of 90s music going here. Don't know how, I don't know how it's going to come out. It's the first time I've ever done this. I just realized I was holding that button down, so I don't know how long it's been recording. Let's see how I... Let's retry that again. I think once I hold it down, it'll keep going and going.
case you're wondering, I have a new phone, of course. I freaking love this thing. <coughs> Made in China, of course. What can you do? See how horrible this sounds. Very shishy. Now I'm going to do it the other way. You know, I can't remember enough. To... <laughs> Alright, let me get my phone going again. This is going to be hard to do. I'm just going to turn the speaker up. In case you're wondering, uh, I'm pretty sure the camera will work decently. There it is. Another song from the 90s that I remember fondly. Now we can play it super slow. That is my TAD-112 from Radio Shack, made by the Tandy, well, for the Tandy Corporation in Korea in 1982, with a nice rosewood finish. Thank you for watching this video, and, uh, of course, stay tuned for more vintage audio stuff. Speaking of which, I've still got all this stuff to review. Uh, we all know what those are. Thanks for watching. yard sale in town when I first moved to Dunbar, West Virginia, very, very long time ago, and, oh, I was probably, I don't know, it's been so long ago, I don't remember. This is another deep inside the, uh, never plugged it into the phone line, and I'm not going to try, I, I don't think it works, but, I don't know, we do now, we do have a landline, and this would be really cool if we could use this, all the belts are still good. If it even has belts, I don't even think it does. It is from uh, uh, bowels of my bedroom closet. Find here. This is a Duophone TAD-112. This is an answering machine from yesteryear. This thing, I'll tell you, was a ball of joy when I first got it. Um, and you'll see why. And now October 1982, or no, excuse me, June 1982 is a Korean-made unit. It's, um... If it'll focus there, there's the sticker for you. You can pause it. Go to www.radioshackcatalogs.com. Hey guys, this is Speaker Freak 95, and I found something that I've lost years ago. I bought this at the. Well, I don't even know where I bought this. I think it was a.